I will talk about three different particle models. So we would like to see particles as localized, localized configurations of, of some field. So then it starts with repairing Max, Maxwell's equation. So, so Maxwell equations are, are great, but have these two weaknesses. One is that a point charge has um, infinite energy of electric field. So this is a big problem. It shouldn't be larger than 511 kefs at my mass of electron because from two photons of this energy <coughs> we can create electron and positron so, so we shouldn't exceed this this uh, boundary with with um, electric field alone another problem with maxwell equation is that the gauss law allows for any recharge so there is no charge quantization instead in physics we know that gauss law only allows for for integer charges so, so the question is how to get do, do it and uh, gauss bonnet theorem it's a very nice hint that it's nearly Gauss law, but it integrates curvature of, of a field, uh, getting topological charge inside some closed surf surface. So uh, this topological charge has to be integer. So, so using Gauss bonnet as Gauss law, we get uh, integer integer charge. We get charge quantization. So, so we interpreting curvature of, as electromagnetic field we will get um, electromagnetism with built-in charge quantization. So this is Faber's model. I will talk about, uh, also about, start with the one-dimensional uh, models, uh, then to show that it nearly recreates entire special relativity, then tell something about two-dimensional models, which add uh, long-range interactions, then, then three-dimensional uh, situation to get electromagnetism with built-in charge quantization and regularization of electric field to, to finite energy. Finally, I will say something about my approach to, to extend this, this, this three-dimensional model uh, to get also other particles, t leptons, magnetic type of moment of, of electron, baryons, and so on. So. Okay, so uh, what are topological charges? So uh, imagine you have a vector field, field of let's say unitary vectors, and, and they can have this kind of singularities. So so if charge topological means that making a loop around such 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 let's say singularity, we look at evolution of, of the, the, the field around this, this loop, and we can see that, that here and the, the field rotates also one times. So we have charge which is plus here because the direction of rotation is the same as 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 for as for the loop. So we have the same here. The difference is that there is phase change between these top top and down uh, images. Here we have minus one uh, topological charge that, that rotating around the field also rotates once but in the opposite direction. Here we have two plus charge, so we get twice rotation. And then we can get also one half charge. So, so let's look at here. So making the rotation around, the field rotates one half time. So it's quite tricky because for this purpose, we need to forget about the arrowheads. So we also have only have vector fields with, without our arrowheads. We say that up vector and down vector is, is the same. So we need to divide it by this, this equivalence relation. So we're going to get plus one half, minus one half. So this time it's maybe it's, it's rather some spin than, 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 than electric charge. So a suggestion that, that it's closer to spin is, is in quantum rotation operator. It says that, that if we uh, rotate the uh, spin S particle by some theta angle, the quantum phase rotates by uh, angle theta times the spin. So this this definition is completely in agreement with 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 this type of uh, topological charges in two dimensions. So 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 there is suggestion that two dimensional topological charges correspond to spin, and to get charge electric charge we should get to three dimensional uh, topological charges like like a hedgehog that we have a point and in three three dimension there are arrow arrows uh, in all all. all uh, Directions around this this, this 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 center of this hedgehog. So we also we have this this kind of um, charge quantization uh, like like in this, this Gauss Gauss theorem that looking at situation uh, around we get some of charges topological charges inside. So 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 for uh, for um, uh, these situations we have minus one. Here you have plus one because you have two plus one and, and one minus one charge topological charge 
this is the compression analysis, this is uh, this is this um, argument uh, theorem principle. Okay, so how to repair Gauss law to get uh, this uh, charge charge quantization? So, so we have the Gauss law saying that integrating electric field field um, around some closed surface, you get electric charge inside. So there is very similar uh, Gauss Bonnet theorem that integrating curvature of some field. So we can use a vector field. So generally it's, it's defined on some some manifold, but here we have imagine we have just a vector field, for example, some different object. And to integrate the curvature of this, 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 let's say, vector field uh, on some closed surface, we get topological charge, charge uh, this time uh, inside this, this, this surface. And uh, we know that topological charges have to be integer, like, like in the pre previous slide. So here is, here is how it looks like in, in, in Faber's model that uh, we have some, some uh, gamma, this is this connection, Christopher's, that we have, let's say, some vector field U. And we look, the gamma E is, is the rotation of this vector uh, field U if uh, going in I direction. So, so going in I direction, that this vector field rotates uh, around this uh, axis gamma E with speed proportional to, 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 to length of this, 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 this vector gamma. So this, so this gamma defines local rotation, let's say, of vector field. Then we have this um, the curvature, R mini. So, so uh, for example, around some of this Hedgehog configuration in three dimension, this, this curvature uh, will be will be one over a, a square, like like for electric field. So, so the, the interpretation from Faber is that it is we sh that we should interpret this curvature as this F mini um, tensor in electromagnetics with, with magnetic in, in, in magnetic and electric fields. However, as as dual uh, F mini uh, tensor, that means that, that we should replace magnetic and, and electric fields uh, inside. So, so this space space curvature corresponds to um, electric field, uh, like around this this Hedgehog as 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 a simple model of, of charge, and time temporal spatial curvature corresponds to magnetic field. So then, for for, for defined F mini tensor this way. We can we can use Lagrangian exactly as in uh, as in electromagnetism, and this way we get um, electromagnetism with built-in charge quantization in this topological way. So here is here is some some intuitive explanation why we should um, get long-range interaction in this picture. So here we have two particles, topological uh, charges minus one and plus one. And we, we can see that this configuration, these two particles change 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 the distance. So, so on the left they are close together, on the right they are far apart. And so what can we can see that that the uh, stress of this, this vector field around increases when we increase the, the distance. So so the, the farther they, they, they are, the larger energy of the field. So so it means that that minimization of energy of the field leads to attraction of these two opposite charges, as in electromagnetism, as we expect. If you would use the, the same charges, you would get uh, repulsion instead of attraction. So this way, we get um, uh, long-range interactions like, like electromagnetism here. OK, so, so here is, here is some, some, some philosophical um, a, a slide with, with that, that there is there are there is this matter and there is uh, and there are fields. The question is what is the, the, the difference between them? So maybe there are, there is no difference. Maybe the particle, the matter, are just some configuration of, of the field. And we know that charges like electron is a non-trivial configuration of the electric fields. It's nearly singular. Um, so maybe let's. Maybe there is only one thing: the field. We cannot avoid the field because to transport, let's say, electromagnetic field uh, waves, we need we need electromagnetic field. So we cannot avoid um, avoid the field. But but the particles are electrons are configuration uh, nearly nearly singular configuration of electric field. <laughs> so so maybe maybe they are just special localized configuration of the field. They are solitons. So here is, here is some general picture that, that, that uh, we know in physics that we have these fields of interactions. <coughs> we also have these particles, which, uh, which usually have this singular um, field configuration around, like one over a square electric field for charges. 
And we also have solitons. So, so solitons are, for example, observed, the projectile solitons are, for example, observed in superconductors. We have these fluxons which carry uh, quants of magnetic fields. So this quantization of magnetic fields is exactly as as uh, as um, in uh, topological so, so they are topological solitons so we have both particles and topological solitons so the question it may maybe are they are the same maybe maybe particles are also topological solitons so based on this 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 idea uh, you would like to find a single field which space of this topological and not not only excitations correspond to our particle physics so which is effectively described by something close to standard models. So this is the, 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 the idea we like to get, very difficult idea. Okay, so so we have this, this problem uh, of an, an infinite energy of electric field of, of a charge. So, so if you integrate electric field from zero to infinity, uh, energy of electric field, then we get infinite energy. So the, it's, it's too much. It, it cannot exceed 5.11 kF, the mass of electrons. So, so if you would integrate not from zero but from 1,4 of femtometers, then we get the proper energy. So, so this says that not, not to exceed 5.11 kF, we need to deform, deform uh, the electric field in distance in the femtometer scale, scale distance. So it's quite large because it's larger than, than the size of proton, what we call. But so the question, so this is this is the problem that that, that trying to, to understand field configuration of, of electron, <coughs> we are going to scale um, to to size and sizes of protons. So, so it sounds problematic. So however, we don't talk about uh, this RMS, so so called uh, RMS square, uh, like of for for proton. Here we talk about the size of deformation which is required not to exceed. 5.11 kevs. <clears throat> okay, and so, so let's look at the, the experimental um, arguments for size of, uh, of electrons. So if you look at, at some literature, uh, ask physicists, um, I, I, I did it a, a, lot, a lot of times, and, and usually it leads to this argument about the g-factor. So, so basically that g-factor of electron is, is very close to 2, so allows to conclude that the, the, the uh, radius is very close to zero. So this is, this is the argumentation. But if you go back, look at literature, um, how, to, how this was concluded, we usually get to this, um, the, we, we get to this um, Delmet's paper, 1988 uh, Delmet's paper, with the, this, this plot. So what's happening in this plot? So, so here we have this G factor, which is a bit above two for electron. And here we have a radius. So what are the points? So we have proton as made of three uh, quarks, and we have triton as made of three nu nucleons. So uh, under um, uh, hypothesis that electron is also made of, uh, of three partons, the, the uh, assumption of, of Delmet was, was that they should lie on a line, but if you do line, you get, we get negative radius, so it makes no sense. So, so what he did, he took two points and fitted parabola to two points. So, so if, if a student would, would, would fit parabola to two points, so it's cheating. So, so it, this argument, if you look at that, it doesn't make any sense, but everybody uses use it. So, so you should be very careful about this argument. And if you know some, some better one, I will gladly, gladly hear it. Please, please email me. Uh, so from the other side, what is g-factor? So usually it's said that g-factor classically is always one. However, it's not exactly true because it assumes that density of charge and density of mass are equal. If we don't have this, this assumption, if we allow density of, of charge and of mass uh, use different density, then we can get classically any, practically any real uh, g-factor. So, so by just changing this 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 density and mass uh, distribution, uh, we can we can change the energy factor. It doesn't have to be, be one. So, so we should be very careful about concluding something about uh, from from g factor, especially especially the radius based on this this assumption, which also said that we are talking about part construction for electron. We are not talking about part construction here. So, so we need to emphasize it. We only talk about the shape of electric field of electron. 
that we need to deform it not to exceed 511 kilohertz volts. So let's look at another uh, argument. So, so we could, in a natural way to ask about size of electron is scattering with positron. And so here is here is the plot of, of cross section for giga, giga electron volts from one one to one to one hundred. So what we can see, we can see some linear trend plus some resonances corresponding to particles. So, but this is huge energy. This is giga, giga electron volts. So, so this is the gamma. This uh, this uh, Lorentz contraction is in, in thousands. So, so, so here we are not asking about electron, but about Lorentz contract electron. So, so the question is, you are interested in resting electron. What is the size of resting electron? So, to to, to get this answer, we should extrapolate this linear trend to energy of resting electron plus positron, uh, and it, it, doing so, we get like 100 millibar, what corresponds to like two femtometer um, radius of electron, whatever it means. Also, looking at this this electron positron cross section, if we extrapolate to resting electron, which are we are interested in resting resting particle, not not a Lorentz contracted particle, then we get as needed radius as needed for for this deformation, not to exceed 5.11 kev. So so everything's agree um, everything agrees here. Okay, so so what does this 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 finite size mean? This this deformation in femtometer scale uh, it doesn't mean parton structure. So let's emphasize we don't we don't need parton structure. It's nearly symmetric. So asymmetry of electron is dipole moment, which is so it's not exactly spherical symmetric, but 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 beside there is no part of structure, there is only deformation of electric field here. So the question is uh, what experimental uh, uh, results? Uh, what implies uh, experimentally implies this this deformation in femtometer scale distance? So so there is there is a possibility. It's it's running coupling that 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 uh, the Coulomb interaction um, depends on this alpha. Uh, Fine constant, which is not exactly fixed, it, it changes. So, so for very high energy um, scatterings, it, it, it increases. For example, from the one, 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 uh, 137 to 127, so in 19 volts. So, so we know that this 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 strength of Coulomb interaction uh, changes for. A, Particles really being very close together. So this is exactly what we should expect if, if there is some some deformation from a charge of perfect perfect point perfect point charge uh, of electric field from perfect point, point charge. So so we should expect some deformation in this distance. And in Faber Faber model there there are these numerical um, calculation that we we take this electron positron per in, in various distances and calculate energy of the field. And it, it's approximately Coulomb interaction. However, there is some uh, correction. For very close distances, you can see that this Coulomb is deformed. So, so this is running coupling. So, so we have asymptotically Coulomb interaction. However, for very close distances, we have we have this this deformation, this running coupling. Okay. So, so the, why is, where this finite size would be in let's say Feynman diagrams? So, so. For example, in this running cap, in this deformation of this, this fine, fine constant, also in, in Feynman diagrams we ignore this problem of infinite energy of, of point charge. So this this is done mathematically by by this normalization procedure, which manually removes some, some infinity. So 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 this is some suggestion that, that we could try to make it better. To, besides just just removing the infinities, we can we try to understand them and, and, and derive it some, from some better theory. Okay, so so how does this regularization look in, look in Faber model? So so the, I have told that that we, we can use some field of let's say unitary vectors, but uh, to if if indeed they would have to be unitary vectors down to the center of singularities, you would have this problem. You have infinite energy. So so to regularize, what we what we've done is that that we allow the, the field to go out of this. Uh, being unitary vectors, what is done using this Higgs-like potential? So Higgs potential uh, is, is has minimum in for vectors of unitary vectors. So 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 it prefers that the vectors are unitary. However, here to prevent infinite energy uh, of charge, 
it allows to, to deform these, these, these vectors down to, let's say, zero, zero vectors here. Okay? So I have written there that there, there was this, this gamma, this Christopher. So uh, the green one is, is for electromagnetism. It would be for this uh, Hedgehog, like here, it would be 1 over R. But with this, with adding, adding this deformation of this U field, it's, it's, it goes uh, to zero uh, in the center. So, so it, is, it allows to escape this infinity. Uh, so finally we get this electric field as for charge asymptotically, but if we look closer to the center, it's deformed toward, toward the zero. So, so, so we get electromagnetic asymptotically, however, close to, to, to particles, we had this deformation of electromagnetics as in running coupling. So, so, so this, this is the, the idea. Inside the center, uh, the Higgs potential is activated to prevent this infinite energy of electric field. So, so kind of, you can imagine that, that, that electromagnetism deforms into other interactions to prevent infinite energy of, of, of the singularity. Okay, this, this, this situation with a minimum of potential, uh, like with entire vectors here for his potential, uh, are generally referred as, as vacuum. So, so the, the minimum, the state of the field with in minimum of potential is referred as, as vacuum. So in vacuum we have electromagnetism here, which is deformed to something different, very close to particles. Okay, so there are these very nice, um, very nice experiments, hydrodynamic, which allows to recreate um, many of quantum-like experiments, especially the, the orbit quantization. That there are there are many types of orbit quantization there, including double quantization of both uh, radius and angular momentum for uh, harmonic potential. I really recommend this, this paper. But there are my slides here. I probably make separate lecture about it. Uh, there is interference on the double slit. Okay, so let's let's go to the, the simplest uh, topological soliton model, which is sine Gordon, which is given by, by this trivial uh, partial differential equation with, pot with potential of uh, with periodic potential like this cosine. So it can be realized with with mechanical uh, tool like this this lattice of pendula connected with a spring. So um, gravity in this potential says that that the pendula would like to be in angle, let's say zero, or zero plus two pi, or zero, zero plus four pi, and so on. So the minimum of potential is not just one, but there is also another minimum, two pi farther, four pi farther, and so on. So, so in vacuum, this minimal energy state, you would like to be in one of these minima. However, there is this, this, this difficulty, let's say, that, that we can have on the left one vacuum, and on the right, another vacuum shifted by two pi. So in this case, then the field has to has to choose some some energy minimizing configuration between these two minima. It's called topological soliton king. So 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 this is this is kind of stable configuration because it's it's held by by this local this minima in in, in one and, and second um, uh, infinity. So so it's, it's stable. It's very difficult to destroy to destroy. It, we would need to, to use opposite rotation. So we need to annihilate it with anti-king. And exactly this kind of experiments can be made. You can find on, on YouTube this kind of videos uh, with, with creation, per creation, with annihilation in this, in this, in this simple mechanical system. Um, okay, and so here is, here is presented the Lorentz contraction. That, so here we can see that, that, that here the time of this photo was, was much shorter. You can see that it's darker. And so it, it corresponds to, to traveling wave. So, so if we have traveling such, such, such soliton, it, it becomes narrower, exactly as in um, Lorentz contraction. With this, with, so instead of uh, light speed in Lorentz, Lorentz contraction, in electromagnetism, here we have this, this, this speed of propagation of, of waves. Um, in, in this field, which is one here. So here is here is this here is Lagrangian of this of this simple model. Here is uh, Hamiltonian. Um, so Euler Lagrange equation gave us this this uh, this evolution equation. Uh, we can also define the, um, uh, so we have this charge conservation as, as number of complete rotation. This is charge, which is, which is integer here due to topological reasons. 
Um, we have the energy conservation, we have momentum conservation. Uh, so here is here is solution for the single skiing. So this is this is configuration going from one to second uh, minimum of potential, which minimizes energy. So so let's say here is here is energy of such a skiing. So so uh, it's zero asymptotically uh, when when this, this pendula are down, and here also they are down, but two pi farther. And here is this energy minimizing shape uh, of this this soliton. So we can easily find find the function for this shape and you can also find function of, of traveling shapes so so we have this traveling traveling uh, sol soliton uh, king and and we get exactly the same kind of formulas on this, as in special relativity with this, this gamma factor and also the the, the sky scaling of energy and momentum is exactly like this, as in special re relativity so it, it is very nice model for to understand particles creation annihilation which is which also has special relativity, including um, Lorentz contraction, but also time dilation. So, so how to get time dilation in this sim simple one-dimensional system? So we get so-called breeder. That if you have this this pendula, if you take one and 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 swing it, we get we get oscillatory behavior. So here you have space, here you have time, and we can see these oscillations. So here is resting uh, breeder given by by this formula, and here is traveling breeder. Uh, so so now now it it oscillates and travels. It's also the difference is just just this Lorentz Lorentz transformation, and so what, what we can see that the number of these ticks of this clock here we have here we have let's say four ticks here we have only two. So it's, we see that the number of these these ticks of these clocks is reduced exactly as in as in time dilation. So, so we get a super simple model which has nearly entire special relativity. So if you, someone would like to understand special relativity, I really recommend studying Saint Gordon model. Uh, okay, so so we have this uh, Lorentz contraction, time dilation. We, we get uh, this uh, par. So we get uh, so here we have uh, space time. We get so we get two kings. So we here we, we get one king, and we can see that it was bounced. It has bounced from the other king. So we have two kings traveling together, and here we, they didn't interact. They they bounced against. So here they have the same charge. Uh, here they have opposite charge. So so there is so they sh sometimes they can annihilate, but not in every theory. So here is nice animation with annihilating two two kings. So, so we can have. Annihilation that means that this energy stored in this in this configuration of the of the king of the soliton is uh, finally re released because of this, this re because of this uh, releasing the topological constraints this rotation left or the rotation right in the, this opposite uh, kings king and king and anti annihilation so so um, so the, the constant the topological constraint are, are being being released and um, Released as as um, massless um, uh, radiations, also as, as as photons. But it's not exactly photon. There is no photon quantization here. But 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 we can see that this is a kind of annihilation. Okay. So so now we'd like to to go, to use these, these these intuitions to go to higher dimensions. So so there are quite popular models of uh, of large particles of. of of pions, uh, mesons, uh, baryons, nuclei, uh, topological using skirmions. So, so uh, there are many, many papers about this kind of models. So here are some uh, uh, models of nucleus for, 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 for. Uh, so, so what they use? So, uh, so they use. Um, some, some, they postulate some uh, Lagrangian and then look at this stable configuration of this Lagrangian and interpret them as particles. So they don't have electric charge uh, nor the, um, uh, the electromagnetics here. So let's look. So here they have this kinetic energy. So it's, it's so they also use this, this Christopher, this local rotation, but a bit in a bit different way. So in practice, they have many types of, of, of terms here. And, and try to add some guess some new terms to, to get better agreement with experiments. It's, it's not perfect, especially that they don't have electric field. So why they don't have electric field nor no charge? Because the, the potential they use uh, is of this type, and this potential has only single minimum. 
what does it mean? So, so, so now in a vacuum, far from particles, then the potential would like to be the, the minimum. So it just gets to this single minimum. So, so we cannot, this way we cannot uh, get long range interaction because the, the potential quickly forgets them, the, all the interaction. You have nearly exponential dec decrease of, of, of memory. What's happening because of this going to this, 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 this only minimum of this potential. So, so, so that the, because of this single, single minimum potential, um, they have only short range, range interaction. So um, how how we do repair it in in, in uh, let's say in Faber's model or generalization? So instead of potential with single minimum, we use potential with like Higgs potential with minimum not just in one point but minimum in a, a space of non-trivial topology. It is crucial that that, that this minimum this vacuum state, which is far from particles, has non-trivial topology. So, so far from these these charges, we have some non-trivial topology of, of, of vacuum, and and this, this it allows to trans to to, to trans uh, transport long-range interactions. So, in this they are called Goldstone bosons to get electromagnetism. Okay, so so this, this is the difference. So, so instead of guessing this kinetic part of Lagrangian, we, which in, in Faber's model we use it by interpreting curvature as, as electromagnetic field uh, with standard electromagnetic Lagrangian. So we get electromagnetism with built-in charge quantization and uh, regularization to finite energy of, of charge. So thanks of using this kind of kinetic energy instead of just guessing this kinetic part. Also, we get far long range interaction because of using potential, which doesn't have single minimum, but minimum of non trivial topology. It is crucial here. Okay, so let's look at this simple two dimensional situation. We have this Higgs potential with vacuum, uh, that means minimum of potential being vectors of length one. So, so we vectors of like one but of any direction yes yeah? so so in vacuum far from particle we have these vector, unitary vectors however in the center of, of, of uh, this singularity um, potential allows to get out of this minimum so so we get to, to u equals zero in the center to prevent infinite energy like energy of electric field of point charge okay so so we can see that that this Higgs potential is not using unitary vectors in the centers is allowed thanks to Higgs potential, which which so so the, the physics physics minimizes energy. Uh, so for a given boundary conditions like this topology, topological non-trivial, physics minimizes energy finds configuration which which allows to to get this boundary condition with minimal energy. So getting this exact shape of, of the, of the uh, topological uh, soliton. So, so the, the green line here is the, is the um, energy, uh, corresponds to energy of, of this um, electromagnetic. So if, if you would use only unitary vectors, this green line would go to infinity and would integrate to infinity. We would, get, we would have the problem. So to pre prevent that, there are activated these two, two types, two other types of, of energy one with potential and one with this uh, radial uh, derivative. So thanks to this activation, we allow the green line not to go to infinity, but to go to zero and finally integrate it to, to a finite value. And this finite energy is the, is the mass. It's literally the mass of, of this, this uh, soliton and behaves as, as mass in special relativity because this is special, this is Lorentz invariant theory. Okay, so here you have some configuration of this uh, on the right uh, plus one uh, charge, topological charge and minus uh, topological charge. So we can we can calculate uh, energy of this field approximated is this, this energy. So uh, so using this, this simple approximation, we get we get from one side we get this uh, mass which is um, uh, rescaled according to special relativity. And here we have this energy of this field um, uh, around these particles, which approximately behaves as here in two dimensions as logarithm of, of distance between them. So from logarithm, so we get effective interaction lo logarithm of distance. If you take derivative, you get interaction one over distance. So, so we get long-range interaction 
not in three dimensions we would like we would have one over r square here we have in uh, one over r two dimension so usually there is it is said that there is a problem if the self interaction so why a charge does not interact on itself so here we don't have this kind of problems because we say that that, that that the interaction is from entire field minimizing energy so so the, the closer the opposite charges are the lowest the lower energy of the field okay so so here is this 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 argument principle in two dimension that 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 uh, from complex complex number so we integrate the um, change of angle of of, of this, this complex function and change of angle over a close uh, loop has to be 2 pi times 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 an integer number and it, it is interpreted as number of zeros of this function minus number of poles of, of this function so 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 we get kind of so we get kind of gauss law around this this curve which which gives constraint for the total charge inside so 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 number of zeros minus number of poles so so, so we get into the dimension this kind of gauss gauss like uh, theorem and, and now we like to get get it to, to three, three dimensions so so uh, here we use this this, this Faber's assumption that, that we take this uh, this gamma field, uh, the, this this local rotation, this connection, Christopher's. Then we define this this uh, curvature and integrating this curvature over over some some closed surface, we get we get charge topological charge inside, which has to be integer. So we get a topological charge with, with um, charge quantization. Um, and and we and we use the standard standard um, Lagrangian magnetic Lagrangian to get um, electromagnetic interaction for this this topological charges. So if you have this quantization of, of ch charge, then we can look at the uh, the lightest uh, non-zero charge and say that this is a model of electron. So so having charge quantization. Then we get we get automatically particles, the simplest particles like, like electron. Okay, so here is some 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 plot with this this, this unitary vectors and and Faber says that that, that we can interpret uh, interpret values where, where the, these vectors have the same direction as as uh, as electric electric field lines and, and we get this kind of electric field um, uh, picture from these these unitary vectors. So here is here is this uh, this this, uh, this uh, formulation of electromagnetics with the standard Lagrangian. So we have this F mini tensor with electric field and the magnetic field. And in in this this, this Faber's model we, we use dual formulation. That means that we replace we switch the electric and magnetic field. So so once once again so the uh, curvature which is space space curvature like around this hedgehog has electric field but not magnetic field so 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 here we have the space space curvature and we, we get electric field here and and for magnetic field we have this space time uh, temporal uh, spatial uh, so we have this bx by bz so so interpreting this curvature um, as uh, as as this f mini uh, tensor dual f mini tensor tensor we get and using standard lagrangian we will get uh, these these quantized um, charges, simply model of electron, effectively um, described having dynamics uh, in Max from Maxwell's equations. So here is this this running run coupling I have mentioned that that looking at such a, such energy of such configuration of two opposite charges, uh, we get we get this energy behaves like this. That means that the entire field. Want, wants to minimize the energy, what leads to this Coulomb interaction between these two, two charges. Uh, however, asymptotically, but we can see that there is some deformation very close, so we have these this finite, finite sized effects uh, which correspond to this running coupling which is observed uh, experimentally. So, 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 so once again, the, there is no, this finite size of electron here is not part of structure, it's only deformation of electric field around, not to exceed 511 curves, which leads to effects similar to running coupling. And having, having, this, um, having this Coulomb interaction, uh, this theory is Lorentz invariant, and we know that Lorentz invariant, um, 
we theory with um, with um, electromagnetics and electric coulomb interaction also leads to, to magnetic effects. So 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 having coulomb coulomb interaction plus plus Lorentz invariance, you get the entire electromagnetic. So, so so we can see that that indeed these these simple electron models are governed by by electromagnetism. Okay, so in the center of the charge we have this regularization that we need to to um, get out of this vacuum state like these unitary vectors, uh, so not to exceed 511 kilo volts. So there is this Higgs potential uh, activated. What means what? So the uh, red line is the energy density of elect of uh, electric field. It would go to infinity without this regularization, but it is regularized thanks to activating this. This, this to add this potential, his potential, and this this, this tan tangential field uh, additional is um, uh, derivative in radial direction. Uh, okay, so so we get this regularization. So now there is the question of, of interpreting this, this vector field. So so Faber interprets them as as four dimensional vectors using these quaternions. Uh, so he says that it's in, it's in a, a sphere. In three-dimensional sphere in four dimensions, and the potential makes that the, the vectors are in, in the equatorial um, and and can go to one of two poles, but it costs energy. And choosing one of these two poles uh, determines which spin we have: plus one, plus one half, or minus one half. So, so, so this is his interpretation. However. Uh, in physics, we know that, that 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 we can continuously transform spin one plus one half to, to minus one half. What cannot be done in this interpretation as as two poles. So 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 I I don't like this this interpretation. So I use Faber's model. I I as just um, let's see starting with as as these vector fields and then would like we would like to to generalize it. So so it is a nice starting point. But now we would like to generalize it so what, what is missing so what is electron so it is not only electric charge but it's only some magnetic dipole we cannot cannot avoid it also is gyroscope the best thing in, in this Larmor precession that if you put electron in magnetic field there, there is precession of this, this spin and it corresponds to two effects which are observed for example in electron paramagnetic resonance especially the pulsed one there is also electron also has this 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 internal clock which uh, uh, the, it was postulated by De Broglie um, nearly 100 years ago that that with energy there also com comes um, some frequency so we would get it for example if if um, substituting um, if using energy as mass of electron into Schrödinger equation so, so usually we put into Schrödinger equation only this we forget about this this uh, this energy from mass on uh, mc square in Schrodinger equation. If you use it, then you get this for an electron this 10 to 21 one hertz approximately, so very fast uh, clock uh, for electron. So the question if if it's it, a true true um, clock. Uh, so Dirac vacuum is also uh, required for the uh, Dirac Dirac equation, but there is also the, this is the best uh, experimental confirmation I know of this De Broglie's clock. So, so this is, uh, this paper here is the link. Um, uh, so, so how, how does this experiment work? So, so we have a very fast clock, like 10 to 20 hertz. However, you can slow it down with time duration. So, if you have very high energy electrons, then the, the distance between the ticks will be reduced. So for this energy, you get distance between clocks, which agrees with distance between lattice uh, in lattice uh, of silicon. So we would like to make them that the, the distance between the ticks of the clock are the same as distance between uh, lattices in uh, between um, uh, atoms in, in, in some lattice uh, of, of crystal, silicon crystal, so if you get agreement of these two distances, we get increased absorption. And this is exactly this, this plot that, 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 that we get various angles. And if the angle, angle agrees, we get increased absorption. So, so if the, there is a resonance between this internal clock of electron with the, this periodic lattice, then we get increased absorption. And it is observed. 
Okay. Um, okay. Again, this is Kuder's experiments. Um, so here is some, 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 some. Let's say philosophical, maybe um, slide. So there is this question: Where is this classical quantum mechanical boundary? So, um, for example, for coupled oscillators, we could write these classical differential equations. However, you could write these equations in normal modes. And you, you do it in normal modes, we get kind of unitary evolution of this normal mode. So, so we can say that this is kind of uh, that solving this, this this system in this normal modes, you get kind of quantum quantum description. Then we got to crystal. So instead of two os couplet oscillators, we get a lattice of couplet oscillators. And then going to normal modes, we get so-called phonons, which are treated as real par particles in, in in perturbative quantum field theory. So so so. So this is not this is these are just different perspectives of the, the same system. So the difficulty is what's happening in this infinite continuous infinitesimal limit. Uh, so many uh, suggestions are in hydrodynamics and especially these quantized orbits. I really like in this Kuder's Kuder's uh, experiments. I really, really recommend. Another suggestion is maximal entropy random walk, which says that that. If we perform statistics on this on this um, on these solitons, but but do it right, so so if you think in space, time, so in space time, these, these particles solitons are, are are trajectories. So if you make this uh, statistical mechanics on these trajectories, or just do random walk with, according to the maximal entropy principle, we get this MERV, which turns out that get the same stationary probability distribution as 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 quantum mechanics. So so we get random walk with localization. So also statistically doing statistical physics right on trajectory. So here we have focus on, on the wave nature. Here we have focus on the corpuscles. We also get the, the quantum statistics. So this is the, the, the level of, let's say, Schrodinger equation. So another level is, is this, this what, what are the particles? So having some Feynman diagram. What is the field configuration behind this diagram? Some electric magnetic field. So, so this is uh, what I'm talking about is trial to, to, to answer the question what is the field configuration behind a given Feynman diagram? So, from one side, we would like to get uh, to go, to go light to this field, field configuration. From the other, working with solitons, if you'd like to perform scattering on them, in practice, we need some effective description like with these ensembles of. Feynman diagram. So, 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 so there are again some two different perspectives on the same system. So this is the, the conclusion is that maybe you shouldn't search for the boundary, but maybe these are just two perspectives on the same system and later look for a translation between these two perspectives. And, and I think a lot can be done, especially using these hydrodynamical experiments. Also, the solitons are very, very promising for in this direction. This direction. Okay, so so uh, in three dimension we get this uh, this these discharges. Uh, so uh, in two dimension we would like to have uh, we have the flux on in, in superconductors. Uh, so we have this uh, this uh, uh, magnetic field from from this uh, uh, the, the kind of integrals getting the the charge the quantization of magnetic field. This this suggestion that. Maybe uh, the uh, maybe the, the two-dimensional solitons are are correspond to spin and the three-dimensional to to, uh, to charges. Uh, so, so we have some evolution, some some evolution of some some phase like this phase in in uh, in the Broglie clock. So 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 uh, in Faber's model there is no place for this evolution. So 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 maybe we need some additional uh, vac vacuum degree of freedom and, uh, corresponding to this. Quantum phase. So, so, okay. So, so this is my my trial to to, to uh, expand uh, Faber's model to get starting with this this quantum phase. So, so, so what is missing? So, in Faber's model, there is no transform continuous transformation between spin up and spin down particles because one is this pole pole north pole of this three dimensional sphere. Second is south pole. So, so we cannot. Go to go continuously from one to 
another in physics we can we can just take a magnet and, and rotate this magnet what should rotate the spin of, of electron uh, so then we have this uh, no special static magnetic uh, dipole moment so so in Faber's model that there is no dipole mo moment uh, magnetic of, of electron so it was, which is very important so there is no no place for this clock then there is there are missing leptons so, so Faber says that if you would like to go to SU4 to get leptons but but leptons are very similar to uh, muons and towns are very similar to, to electrons so, so, so asymptotically they are the same they, are, they have charges but they are kind of different realization of this, this, this charge so, 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 so how we could like we, we could do it so, so this is my approach so Faber just uses this field of vectors I'm saying that, that we should also recognize internal rotation of these vectors so, so uh, like like in the, in the language of um, liquid crystals, this is the difference between uh, uniaxial pneumatics and biaxial pneumatics. So, so, so instead of just a single, a single vector in every point, we have kind of three, three orthogonal uh, uh, axes in every point. So, so, so we having three orthogonal axes uh, distinguishable in every point, you can perform this hedge configuration using one axis, two, second axis, or third axis. So this way we get three solutions, three configurations which are asymptotically the same, have the same uh, charge, electric, topological. However, they have different realization, they, have, they, can, they can have different mass. So, so these are kind of three leptons because of three spatial dimensions. So, so one we have using this space of these three axes or um, grammatically ellipsoids of three different, different axes, uh, we can we get kind of three leptons because of spatial dimension even more we have we, we get this so this additional rotation i interpret as this quantum phase which kind of rotates in in uh, this de Broglie's clock then we have this Harry Ball theorem saying that saying that if we uh, perform hedgehog with one axis then trying to align second axis on, on a sphere we cannot do it there is there are topological problems so so there is this needed some additional different type of, of um, uh, singularity on, on, on this sphere uh, which kind of looks like ma ma magnetic dipole so so this way we cannot have just just pure uh, charge and we don't we know that in physics we don't have pure charge we have charge with magnetic dipole and so this is this is the explanation because of the Haley ball theorem in, in this view um and so here we have okay so how to realize this this uh, field of three uh, vectors this ellipsoid field so we can say that that we have some field of, of vectors t by t vectors which have some tendency to some 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 uh, some three three eigen, eigen values so these are these lengths of this this three axis which can rotate so in vacuum they can rotate however they they are dis distinguishable so we have three three eigenvalues which are distinguishable at, and they can rotate by this O, o matrix rotation matrix orthogonal. Uh, so, so we need some this Higgs like potential here becomes something what prefers these three di distinguishable axes. So, 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 so now, now the, the potential, so in Faber's model, the potential preferred this uh, vacuum of topology with, which was S2 sphere, two dimensional sphere. Here we have vacuum of topology of this, these possibilities for this O matrix, so we have SO3 vacuum. So this is the difference in, between this model. So we, we add this one degree of freedom of, of vacuum. As now potential prefers that these three axes are dis distinguishable. However, to prevent infinity in the center of, of singularity, um, they can deform. So, so here is an example of such deformation that we have um, two dimensional ellipsoid ellipse we can see that it has fixed shape uh, around however to prevent this this singularity in the center it deforms into a circle so ellipsoid deforms into a circle to to lose this asymmetry in the center to prevent infinite energy of, of the charge so this is the regularization mechanism from ge geometric perspective 
Okay, so here is here is some 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 view on on electron that we have this this um, uh, one axis performs the Hedgehog and the second has some problem topological because of the Haley Ball theorem, leading to to this kind of uh, of of flux tube kind of flux tube we have so this model we have kind of flux tube in the vacuum kind of fluxons but but in vacuum so this is also some controversial maybe um, claim let's let me see that that maybe it's not so controversial in the moment uh, okay so 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 this flux tube so from one side would um, so we have these two types of uh, positronium so so we have orto and parapositronium so Orthopositronium we have, have the same spin. It's thousand times, uh, almost uh, more than thousand times, uh, have longer lifetime than parapositronium with opposite spin. So, so, so this is orthopositronium is extremely stable. It's, it's, it's so, so, so these kind of, of tubes, these flux tubes, uh, could could um, allow it, it, it to make to be stable. Uh, so, uh, so this is one 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 requirement. To to make stable orthopositronium. Um, so another is that that we could get neutrinos as, as as these tubes of this 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 uh, this, this uh, flux tubes kind of fluxons in, in vacuum. Uh, okay, so here is some argument that that maybe there are these kind of tubes, uh, so like fluxons, but not in superconductor, uh, only in uh, in vacuum. So there are this this um, this observed uh, there is a corona heating problem you have they see this line there are these really thin uh, uh, lines one nearly one dimensional structures in, in the, the corona uh, so it's kind kind of uh, what i need what there is needed in this model that we have these one dimensional structures which which have energy density per length so 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 this is one necessary uh, one place where, where when there are ne ne kind of ne seem necessary, another place is making this orthopositronium sta stable, suspiciously stable. Another pro situation is to hold the large uh, nuclei together. So, so there is there is this problem: why these positively charged protons hold together inside nucleus? So, so this is a difficult question, and these kind of lines could answer this this question. So we can discuss about about light. So 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 uh, maybe maybe let's let's skip it here. Um, okay. So so here is uh, we we'll go to baryons now. Uh, so uh, in baryons there there are these quarks which which are believed to have uh, fractional charges. So so can you get a fractional charge here? So. We know that uh, charge so is a full hedgehog. So so kind of full rotation is, is charge. So so we could get a fractional charge if make performing fractional rotation. So 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 this this is the idea that, that we could make some partial rotations locally. They have to uh, sum up to, to integer charge. So we have still charge quantization. However, locally they can there can be fractional charges here, kind of quarks. Um, okay, but with this confinement, finally they have to be integer charge. So here is here is some some suggestion for for uh, for baryons. So so we have these 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 lines. So so these lines are have have in cross section this this kind of uh, so in cross section they have this kind of configuration. So there there are this flux line. And there are three types of these flux lines. So, so there is kind of electron flux line, it has lowest energy, and there are flux lines using a second or third axis. And so, so we get kind of three, three flux lines: electron, muon, town flux lines, which have increasing energy, probably. And so, so we can have this kind of configuration that we have one flux line and another one around it. So this another one has to be of different type, like muon flux line around uh, electron flux line. So what's happening? There is some interaction between between these two. So so it has some 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 rota internal rotation. We can see some internal rotation uh, in this in this flux line, and this internal rotation um, enforces some behavior in inside this this this, this central electron flux flux line. <coughs> So this, this rotation, uh, this enforced rotation by by this external uh, uh, 
through Proof's muon, through Proof's line, uh, create some fractional charge inside that I have mentioned. So, so, so we get fractional rotation, which is enforced by being a baryon. So this is this is this is a nice suggest suggestion that that baryon requires some charge, not necessarily plus one. It can be let's say two thirds charge, like 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 for quarks. But baryons require require this charge. So so this is very nice because it allows to explain why neutron is heavier than protons, what is very very non trivial, because <coughs> neutron is baryon, so it has to ha have this positive charge, and in neutron it has to be compensated, like like here it has to be compensated by minus one third one third uh, minus one third quarks, kind of. Uh, so so in proton it, it proton can just close this rotation, this one charge, neutron has to compensate it, and this compensation makes it longer and this, this configuration, so it leads to higher energy. So this is this is this is intuition why why neutron is heavier than than proton. Uh, why in, in in we would expect the opposite because uh, pro, proton has charge and charge corresponds to energy. So so we should charge so proton should be should be heavier naively, but 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 this is a suggestion why neutron is heavier because baryons require some some charge. Uh, also then you can you can give uh, neutron um, so by so in neutron you have two baryons, each of them would require some charge in this this, this picture. So so what can happen? They can uh, they can share this charge. So proton can share part of its charge to to the neutron to to so to reduce. So this way we get some savings, and these savings are the binding energy. So we can have this kind of structure. We have some plus plus and in the center can be minus or, or zero depending on the on the, the charge distribution so why it's important because we know that deuteron, deuteron has very very large positive um, quadruple moment so so this is quite strange that that proton neutron configuration has quadruple mod moments it's strange but 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 indeed the experiments say that, that it has quadruple moment and this would be a suggestion because because the, Proton shares part of its charge to neutron to uh, to reduce energy to get its binding energy. So here is some 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 suggestion for beta decay that um, you have this neutron with this uh, n force plus in in the center, and then uh, neutron with this plus in the center and minuses compensating uh, at the two sides, and then then it goes to the, the proton and, and releases this energy as, as neutrino and getting this uh, minus uh, electron. So 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 we have kind of beta beta decay this way for larger uh, new, larger nuclei. No, this is a difficult question. We can use these these, these lines of these models to, to to hold them together against the Coulomb Coulomb repulsion. For for strangeness, if you look at list of uh, of baryons usually then the, there is there is we start with neutron and proton and add these uh, pions getting getting higher higher and higher strangeness so so it could be re uh, realized here by by adding this twist to this to this to this um, uh, this um, uh, flux line around so there is a place for strangeness so comparing to to experiment so there are some a lot of papers saying that indeed in neutron there is there is a positive core inside and and negative uh, shell around so 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 why we think about neutrons as as just zero uh, from uh, from charge perspective there are many many papers claiming that 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 it has something like like suggested by these Sorrington's models for neutron we have this strong uh, quadruple electric quadruple moment uh, which is nicely explained by by the soliton models um okay so so the, how to calculate something here so unfortunately this is very difficult uh, so so i have only these qualitative um, considerations now so here is some some general sketch how to go to quantitative um, um, model in analogy to, to Faber's model, so, so so we need to get this uh, this rotation. So we we have this 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 m this field of this tensor, this m field, and it's some it has some rotation, and we have some 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 shape of this ellipsoid defined in this in this by this diagonal controlled by this potential. 
So, so in that you, we have dynamics of, of this rotation. So for this rotation, we can get Faber-like Faber -like, um, Hamiltonian, Lagrangian. Uh, so it is given like, like here. Uh, but the difficulty is what to do if we, if we go out of this, this, this uh, potential minimum. So this, there are lots of choices to, to make here. And then, then we would need to, to simulate it. So, so there is Hamiltonian for this, this rotation field, but, but we need to go to Hamiltonian to the, the, the matrix field. There are a lot, lot, lot ways to do it. And the potential, uh, also that there are many ways to do it. And finally, we would need to get simulations and compare them with experiments. So, so this is a lot of work. And, um, and um, it's, it was too much for, for, for solitary work for me. I'm looking for a collaboration, of course. Okay, so so another for, for there is also a possibility for for adding gravity, but not I I don't know. So I didn't thought about general relativity, but there is this approximation, this this why you use approximation, which is called gravitomagnetic, gravity electromagnetic. So for example, gravity probably directly confirm this 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 gravity electromagnetism. So it's it is very it says that in some approximation we can see um, general relativity theory as very similar to, to electromagnetism. So um, originally um, uh, Newton's gravity is not not Lorentz invariant, uh, Ras, like Coulomb Coulomb uh, interaction is not Lorentz invariant. So Maxwell's idea uh, was was to add this this magnetic field and get, getting this for for for, uh, for equations. Uh, so we can do analogically in, in gravitomagnetics, making Newton's equation uh, a Lorentz invariant. So this is very similar, a bit different, different constant. We get this magnetic field analog to for for for, for gravitational field. We, there is this minus saying that that, that the same charges uh, at, uh, repel, but the same masses attract. Okay. So for for it is very similar to electromagnetic, so so getting unification if it is relatively simple. So the idea is that that in in space space we get a field of three axes. So in space time you can get, get field of four axes, and the fourth axis has largest tendency to, to be aligned, and small perturbation of this aligned uh, fourth axis correspond to, uh, to to gravity. This is the idea. So so. Uh, while, it's, while it's spatial, we have this charge quantization for 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 this temporal. There is not um, we don't get topological in a trivial situation right there. Um, um, so the question is why why the uh, and mass is also gravitational mass. So so we could try try for example enforcing some 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 determinant as constant. So it would make that. The formation of this, this ellipsoid of, of this uh, lambda by potential also enforce the formation in this, in this gravitational deformation. So, but this is, this is open question: how to how to get this, this unification? Okay, so finally, uh, to, to to describe scattering of solitons, we need to get to some perturbative quantum field theory. Okay, let's let me summarize. So so. Physics should be as, as simple as, as possible. So, so this is this model is practically taking electromagnetism, adding the um, um, quant charge quantization, the finite energy of the charge uh, in, in Faber's model. Then I add single single vacuum degree of freedom, and we get three leptons. We get uh, magnetic dipole for for electron. We get baryon-like structure with explanation why why neutron is heavier than proton. So. This is extremely simple, simple model which has nice, nice, nice agreement with, with particle physics. So it seems interesting. So, but but the, the safe base is that the, I think the, the Faber's model. So the question is how to expand it, how to generalize it to get other particles. Ideally, all the particles which are and effective dynamics def described by the standard model. Okay, thank you.